Hello guys, my name is Marco Majolo. I'm the author of the Canine Legends series books and my last book, My Daughter's Dog, is already available everywhere. If you still did not read it, please do. You, I'm sure you're gonna enjoy. We reached the mark of 5,000 copies sold. It was amazing in the last two months, so I'm very happy. Thank you very much if you already if you already bought it. Uh, if you want one of the want a copy of my book signed by me, you can send me an email to marco.majolo at gmail.com and I, I will sign for you. I will write whatever you want me to write and I'm going to mail to you whatever you are around the planet. Very soon, uh, I will be at the Miami Book Fair. So if you want to talk to me in person, if you want to meet with me in person in November 17, 18, 19, 2023, I will be at the book fair in Miami. You can go there and meet me and talk to me and we can have a good time. So today we're gonna start a series of videos that I'm gonna talk about my dogs. And I've been thinking for a while to do something like that, but uh, I confess that I didn't do it so far because I knew it would be a very emotional challenge for me talking about my dogs. Uh, but today I'm going to try and I'm going to start and we're going to start talking about Flesha. Yes, her name is Flesha is the dog and the cover of our first book and the cover of Canine, Canine Legends, A Dog Agility Story. Uh, in the book, her name is Arrow. You guys will understand why I changed the name, but I'm going to tell her story. I'm going to tell the real story of Flesha, the real story of Arrow. Uh, and you guys will see that a lot uh, of the facts that I'm going to tell, they are exactly like in the books. And some of the facts are not like in the book. Okay, so we're going to see some similarities in, in this story. So we need to go back to the late 1990s and the beginning of the 2000s, more than 20 years ago. Uh, I used to always be in love with dogs. I have dogs in my house since I remember I was alive. Uh, but in the, in the late nineties and beginning of the two thousands was the first time that I have my first contact with dog agility, that sport that dogs go, go, dogs need to go through obstacles, ramps and things like that. And it was in an old channel called Animal Planet. So I don't even know if that channel exists today, but I used to watch dog agility events in the beginning of the, the two thousands at Animal Planet. I was in Brazil. I was not living in the U.S. yet. And at that time, my family was, well, I was, I will not say my family, but I was having some problems. And I was, I really was kind of broke. I didn't have a lot of money. And I started working two, three, four different places. Every place that they need help and I needed money, I would go and work there. So then I started working in a friend's kind of a farm. And in this farm, they had like animals, they had a bunch of stuff. And his father uh, used to breed Border Collies. But those Border Collies was, were not Border Collie for dog agility. They, they, they were like specifically for herding. They, he used to breed Border Collies for herding. So they're very different, you know. Um, border Collies for herding, they don't have the same, let's say, configuration uh, to do dog agility. Nowadays, you have breeders. Uh, where they breed border collars just for competition so that uh, you're going to make a dog like faster, uh, inf um, whatever. But I started working there and I was completely in love with the border collars. I had no money to buy a border collar at that time. No money. Uh, but I got a very good relationship with every everybody there. And they had a puppy, a female puppy that nobody will buy it. You know, she was just there because she was very shy, she was very scared, completely different of what to expect from a Border Collie. You expect a Border Collie to be like outgoing, to be brave, because those dogs will to go to work herding with sheep. So you need them to be confident. And for that reason, nobody ever chose that female and they gave it to me. <laughs> so that was Flesha. And the name Flesha, it means arrow in English. Yeah. In Portuguese, I mean. So Flesha is Portuguese is Portuguese version for Arrow. So and I name her Arrow because I don't know because I think Arrow it was like be she will point me the direction, and I could not be more 
pride, you know, because that's what she did. So I remember I brought Flesha home. I was living by myself. I was young. I was living by myself. And I, did, I decided to start looking for a place to do dog agility with her. But a lot of people say, look at her and say, well, this dog was never going to be good in dog agility. This dog was never going to be good because, you know, the confirmation is not good. She should, she is too shy. You need the dog that's more outgoing because she's going to be scared of jumping. She's going to be scared of going to the planks. I never give up on her. And then I found a place to train her and a trainer called Leo. <laughs> And and he helped me a lot. We did a lot of foundation work with her to work on her shyness, uh, to make her brave. So we start very slow, doing jumps and and with the bar on a very low level. You know, playing with her a lot every time we show up in the training facility. And we do we did that for a year and a half. You know, training her maybe almost two years. And she was ready to compete. Uh, we went to our first competition and we won. <laughs> and it was a beginner competition. It was nothing big. No big handler was there. It was not a difficult course. Of course, for me at that time as a beginner, uh, it was hard. But it was just a beginner course. So when she, once we won that course or that competition, the first competition, things start just moving forward. We were training more. She was showing more, much more confidence, much more. Uh, 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 she was not shy. She started to go close to people, something that she never liked it to be close to people because she was so shy. And she started developing and developing. And we started going to competitions and winning a competition here, a competition there, a competition here, a competition there. We started going up the, um, the levels. Until we got on what they call in Brazil grade three, that is like the masters. And we started even winning some, we had some good victories on the masters, you know. Uh, and I competed with her for the first time in my first international competition. And we got a podium. Uh, so I, she was. She was against everything everybody was expecting. And it was an amazing ride. Like, it was amazing. So, years passed. We were winning and winning. And then we decided to open our own dog training facility. That we will call, in Portuguese, because we were in Brazil, called Cão Petição. Uh, it's like Cão is dog in Portuguese. And, and the end of the word, the, the end of the word Petição, it means competition like competition so it's like competitors or in, whatever so it's like a a, a a game of words that we created and our uniform were green and like light green and every time we would to compete with that uniform everybody would look at us and say look those are those guys uh and it was amazing you know uh from 2005 until 2000 my life from that was like from 2004 to 2008, 9 was like that with her competing. So in 2008, something important happened that it was when we got Brown. Brown is this guy here. So unfortunately, dogs don't leave a lot and they don't. They, they, and, and the window that they can compete, let's say in the high level, it's very short because like if you start competing a dog at two, two and a half, when he's when he's eight, when this dog is eight, it's like he start getting older. So it's like you have like five years or six years. And that's why a lot of dog agility competitors, they have so many dogs because they need they have a dog two years old, a four years old, a six years old, because they are always like competing. They need the the dogs to continue competing. So I was against to get another dog at that time. I didn't want, I, I never saw myself competing with another dog. But of course, Leo insisted, my friends insisted. Sooner or later, we need another dog. And then we got Brown. And Brown, he was born in 2008. And he came from a very, very good breeder. Very good, like, very good. Like, a, like a, a, a breeder who prepared dogs for competitions, for dog agility. And when I start uh, training Brown... 
this is not brown story so i'm gonna go very quick but uh i'm gonna do a video telling brown stories but anyway uh, brown was like different he was faster he was crazy he was he had a precision that aaron didn't have so it was just logical to com start competing with brown and i start putting flesh uh, aside a little bit and it was funny because at that time like 2008 9 10 it was when my parents were having a divorce and my mother was living in my house and it was perfect because she was staying with flesha and they created this amazing bond so they became like best friends so uh, i will still take flesha to the training center to train with us uh, and I even took her to like local competition and did some competition with her, but I was not, I was mo more focused on Brown at that point. And my mother and Flesha would just become best friends. Uh, so then I started competing with Brown, Flesha started staying at home. And then we decided that we, we had two very good dogs. We had Flesha, we had Brown and we wanted puppies and then we bred them. Uh, so we, breed, we bred Flesha with Brown and we had some puppies. One of those puppies is Jack that is still here with me. This is not the video to talk about Jack. We'll talk about Jack at another opportunity. Uh, but after, the, this is an important moment because when Flesha had babies, I kind of stopped training her. Uh, she had a very difficult pregnancy, let's say like that. Uh, when the babies were about to born, she didn't have any contractions and we had to do a C-sec on her. And I thought I would lose her. Uh, it was very hard. We had five puppies, one died and four survived. Uh, and I really thought I would lose her. It was a very, very difficult time. And then I decided to stop and she became that pet dog at home, living happy. I had a bunch of trophies that I gained and that I won with her a bunch of ribbons, a bunch of medals, and she had puppies. So I decided, okay, girl, it's time for you to stop. And then she stopped. Then in 2012, that's the year when I moved to the United States. And then I brought her, I brought Brown, I brought Flesha, and I brought Jack. So Flesha's life in US was retired life. You know, she at that time on, on 2012, she was eight years old, uh, she's from 2004, so she was eight years old, so she was completely retired, she was the pet. I used to take her to some competitions, but just to walk her around, you know, and not compete, not train. Sometimes I used to take her to the training center in Florida where I was training, and just like let her jump a couple jumps and that's it and done. So she was retired from 2012, 2013. So she lived with me, she, she was the best pet dog, she was always laying down with me, always playful, always playing with the, without, with the boys, you know, Brown and Jack, and, uh, and then in 2018, uh, this is going to be the difficult part to tell you guys, but that's okay, I'm going to try. <laughs> so in 2018, she was about to turn 14, she was 13 and... Eight, I think, thirteen and eight, yeah, in January, yeah. And I remember she played with the boys one day, and we went to bed. She ate, we slept. The next day, I woke up, and she did not eat. And she was on the corner, it's like, "Don't touch me." And that was very odd because my dogs. I always say about my dogs: if you offer food to my dogs, and if they don't eat, they're they're sick because. I trained them to receive treats and rewards for working. So I looked to her gums and they were very pale. So that's when I took her to the hospital where I work. Uh, it was 2018. I was there already. I started working in that hospital in 2015. And she was not in a good place. And she was, she was not well. And then we took an x-ray. And at the moment that I saw the x-ray, her heart was like ginormous. And I knew she will not, you know, I, I knew. So she died that day in 2018. And the feeling that I have for that dog is a feeling of 
And that's the very important part for me. Uh, I, what I feel for that dog is gratitude. Because remember when I say that I chose the name Flesha or Arrow because I thought you would point me a direction. It was exactly what she did. Uh, without her, I will never be where I am now. Without her, I will never become a animal behaviorist. I will never become a dog agility competitor. I will never even not even be living in US. Everything that happened in my life in the last 20-ish years, it was because of her. It was because what she gave to me. Um, I will not be here. I will not be working with this without her. If, if she was not cross in my life. So she was my first Border Collie. She was my first competitive dog. She was the first love of my life. Uh, so I thank her, I thank God, I believe in God, and I thank God every day for the moments I had with her. I'm very grateful. I'm a, I'm, and I am a little bit angry with God sometimes because why dogs just live 14 years, 13 years, you know? If a person lives 80, 90, 100, a dog should live at least 40, you know? Uh, and that's it. So this is Flash's story or Arrow's story. The book that is in the cover. Uh, the dog that is in the cover of my first book. The Canine Legends. And I hope you guys enjoyed the story. Have a good one. Bye.